All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Sorry for the delay there, some technical difficulties, but I think we are on track now. So thank you all for joining us. Today we are talking about how to light up your Conga solution with Salesforce Lightning Connect. So a little bit about me before we get started. My name is Melissa Geithner. I'm a senior product specialist here at Conga. I've been here a little over three and a half years, and prior to my current role, I was a Conga business analyst. So today's webinar should be relatively short. Taking a look at the agenda here, I'll be briefly introducing Salesforce Lightning Connect. We'll take a look at creating a Conga query. I'll also show how to add a Conga query to your Composer solution. And finally, we'll take a look at a working Composer solution with Lightning Connect data. If you have any questions, feel free to type those into the GoToMeeting chat, and we will answer those at the end. So let's jump on in here. For those of you who aren't already familiar with Salesforce Lightning Connect, it's a tool that allows you to connect external data sources something like SAP, Oracle, NetSuite, Microsoft, et cetera, with Salesforce. Unfortunately, you can't currently report on Lightning Connect data. So I've got a big red X through the report, sad. But if you are using that Lightning Connect data in your Composer solution, there is a workaround. So you can create a SQL query in order to pull that data into your Conga solution. So we will go ahead, we'll move on into Salesforce now. Let me get that pulled up here. All right. So we are taking a look here at an account record. It's just scrolling up to the top here. We are looking at United Partners, and you can see from here, if we scroll down a little bit, this is what that Lightning Connect data looks like. So we've got this related list here for SAP sales orders. And we've got a series of different orders through this related list here. So that's what that Lightning Connect data looks like when you can view it in your Salesforce instance. So as I mentioned, we are going to create a SQL query in order to pull that data through. So I'm just scrolling back up here to the top of the screen. And I'm going to right click on the All tabs, that plus sign up at the top. We'll go ahead and open this in a new window. And if I jump on over to this new window here, we will be scrolling down and we're looking for common queries. So we want to pull up that tab. Now, if you're currently using Composer and you have Composer 7, you'll need to do a separate installation of Congo queries if you don't already have it. If you are on Conga Composer 8, you'll actually have Congo queries that'll come with the package when you install it. So we've got Conga Queries installed here. Go ahead and select that tab. We've got a few examples that we've already created. But for our purposes right now, let's go ahead and create a new one. So we'll hit this new button right here. We'll go ahead and give this a name. So it's helpful when you're creating a Conga Query to give it a pretty descriptive name so that you know what it's about. You can kind of easily identify it from the list of queries. So we'll call this one, we know that we're looking from the account, and we're going to be adding this to our account summary. So we'll just call it account, account summary, and this is going to be SAP sales orders. So we'll give it a name. We could also fill in a description too, if we needed to provide some additional detail, but for today we'll just leave it with the name. We'll go ahead and click save. All right, so now let's go actually and build the query. We'll click on this Conga Query Builder button. And shortly here, we'll be taken to the Conga Query Builder interface. So a query differs slightly from a Salesforce report, not slightly, a lot, um, in that you want to start from the lowest level object, from the base object. So if we jump back here for just a second, we remember our parent object was the account. So we were looking at United Partners. And then the base object that we want to pull the data from 
was the SAP sales orders. So that's going to be our base object. So I'm going to hop back over here, and I'm just going to type S on my keyboard for sales orders, just to jump down that list a little bit. So scrolling through here, we can see their sales order. So that's what we want to select as our lowest level, our base object. And if you ever forget that when you're building the query, there's a little helpful tip here. Select the base object. So we'll pick sales order. We'll go ahead and hit next from here. And we can see here, this is our base object sales order. And here are all of the available fields that we can include in this query. So for today, we're just going to grab a few of these fields. We'll go ahead and we'll grab total. We can double click on it. We can also select the field itself and use this little double arrow. If we wanted to grab all of these fields, we could actually hit the double double arrows and move those over. If we change our mind, we can hit the left facing double double arrows, put those back. So we'll go ahead, we'll select again, double click total, double click notes, and I think we'll go ahead and include sales order ID as well. So just a few fields there. Now something to point out in the Conga Query Builder, we're looking at our base object, and then we can also see this other subsection here that says lookup business partner. So what is that exactly? If we jump back to the account record again, and if we open up one of these sales order records, just right click on it, open it up in a new tab. If we jump over to this new tab, we can see out on that sales order record, there's a lookup field here, the business partner ID. And if we click on that field, we can actually see that's just a lookup back to the account. So going back to the query, we can see that we could also, if we needed to pull through fields from the account, um, for our purposes, we don't need any of those because they're already available to us from our Conga solution. So you'll see here in just a second why this lookup here is important. But we've got our fields again from the sales order object that we want to include. We'll go ahead and click Next here. And we have the ability in here to add some filtering, some sorting. So for Conga Composer, the behavior of Conga Composer is such that when you're on a particular record, so when we were on the account United Partners, Conga will pull through all of the data for that particular record based on the nature of adding the record ID. So account partners, sorry, excuse me, account United Partners, we can see this 15 digit ID up here is the record ID. So that identifies the account associated with that is, is United Partners. So back in the query here, let's go ahead and add a filter. Let's go ahead, we're gonna go down to business partner we're going to add account ID. And we're actually going to just leave this blank. So it'll say account ID equals blank. And the reason we want to do that, if we didn't include this filter in here, Congo would run the query and it would pull back every single sales order record. That's not exactly helpful in this situation when we're creating an account summary Congo document because we want to see the sales order specific to United Partners. So including this empty filter here, account ID equals blank, allows Conga to pull back the record specific to that account that we're on. It's a little tricky, but we'll see here in just a second how that works. We'll go ahead and we can click Next here. So here's our Conga query that's written out up here. This is our SQL statement. And now we have the ability we can test out that Congo query and make sure that we've created it correctly. Down here, we see some fields, PV0, PV1, etc. So PV stands for past value. So PV0 is saying, okay, the very first value we want to pass into our query is what? So let's jump back here to the account, United Partners again. We're going to copy that account ID 15 digit ID from the browser URL. Go back to the query again, and we'll paste this in. So right now we're basically manually doing what Composer will do for us when we click our Conga Composer button. 
we can come down here and click preview. Oops, got a pop-up blocked here. Let me allow those. All right, let me try this again. Do preview again. Perfect. So now we can see here are all the results from that query based on the United Partners account ID. So it looks like it found 37 records and it's showing us the first 20 rows. So this is great. We know that our query is working correctly. We'll go ahead, we'll close this out. And we can actually click save. We don't need to remove this record ID. Congo will actually just completely forget that once we click save here. Perfect. So then just as a, as a reference, we can always come back and take a look at what that Conga query says. So we've got select. These are the fields that we selected from. That's the object that we we're selecting those fields from, which again was sales order. And then where. So the where clause is basically what our filter was. So we're saying where business partner ID equals PV0. So this is where Congo will go through and push in that account record ID. So great, we've got our query, we tested it, we know it's working. What we would do next here is we would come up and we would select the Congo query record ID so that we can add that to our solution. For today's purposes, I've actually already created a button out here called account plan with sales orders out on the account. So we can go ahead and add that query ID to the button. And let's go ahead, we can access that a couple of different ways. Um, we can go from setup here. And then over on the left hand side, we want to look for that account object. So we'll go down to build and then to customize. We'll expand customize, come down here to accounts. And then finally, we'll go to Buttons, Links, and Actions. So we'll select that. We've got a bunch of different buttons and links here, but we know that we had already created that button, Account Plan with Sales Orders. So I'll go ahead, I'll edit that. It's taking just a second here to load. But in a minute here, we'll see that Congo Composer button URL. So this is a pretty complex button URL here, but that query record ID that we copied, this is in here where we would paste in that value. So again, for today's webinar, just to save some time, I've actually already created a query and added that query ID to the button URL, but this is an example of where you would paste in that value. We've got a parameter called ampersand query ID equals and then we would paste in that 15 digit record ID that we copied from the Congo query record. We can see here it starts with that A2K. So if I jump back to that query that we just created together, you can see there's my 15 digit query ID that again starts with that A2K. So if you were starting this solution from scratch, you would copy that 15 digit record ID for the Congo query and we come in here to our button URL and we would paste that in. So another best practice when you're adding Conga queries or reports to your button URL is to add something called an alias. So we've got an alias here called orders. What that alias does, it allows you to easily identify that particular data set. It's optional. You don't have to include an alias. If you don't, Conga will name that report or query for you. This would just be named query data query data one, and so on. But for our purposes, let's, we included this alias here to give it a good, a good, uh, good name so that we can easily identify it. Struggling here, sorry. <laughs> um, so we've got this alias in here. We've got orders. We've got the Congo query ID. And then another thing that we want to include in here is again, do you remember that PV0 that we saw back in the Congo query builder? So we also want to include that in the button URL itself. So we're saying, okay, Conga, go ahead, run this query. We've aliased it as orders. Here's the query ID. We also want to include this question mark PV0 equals. So again, that PV0 stands for pass value. So we're saying to Conga, okay, when you run this query, 
the very first value I want you to include in my filter is this right here, this account ID. So again, that goes back to allowing Conga to pull the sales orders specific to the account record that we're on. So we don't end up with every single SAP sales order in the entire org. This way we have sales orders specific to the account record that we're on. So we've got all of the information that we need here to make this solution work. So we'll hop back on out to the account record, go back to United Partners, and let's go ahead, let's launch that Conga Composer button. So we'll click on Account Plan with Sales Orders. Wait just a second here. Conga's going to gather up any templates, any related data sets. And we see here we've got three different templates available. So we want to include this account summary template. And let's take a look and see, again, for purposes of saving time in today's webinar, we've already included the Conga Composer fields in this template here. Excuse me, the query fields. So let's pop this open. And just on the other screen, so let me move it over here. So here's our template. We've got our account summary. We've got a bunch of other fields in here coming from the master object, as well as some additional queries that we have built. But right down in here, this section is where we're including that Lightning Connect data. So again, if you remember, we aliased that query as orders. So we've got this little detail region right here. We've got the different fields. We've got sales order. This is external ID. We've got sales order note. And then we've also got sales order total sum. So when we're creating those fields, we would insert them in our Conga Composer template, just like we would any other fields. And we'd also want to be sure to include these table start and table end fields. So the Conga knows this is part of a detail region. These fields aren't coming from the master object. They're not coming from the account in this case. They're coming from a query that we created that we aliased as orders. So our template is ready to go. We've got those fields in there from the query. We can minimize that. And now let's go ahead and run it and see what the finished product looks like. So we'll click Merge and Download. Conga is going to again run any sort of data sets that we've included, merge those into the template, and now we should see the finished product here. So opening up that account summary, we can see down in here, here are all of the sales orders that are associated with that record there. And we've got a bunch. We've also gotten a little fancy in this template. We've included account, so we can just take a quick look at this template, this output here, and see that we've got a total of 15 sales orders. And again, just for our purposes, these are all coming from that Lightning Connect data. So again, not, not a whole lot to cover in this webinar, just showing you that you have the ability to include that Lightning Connect data in your Conga Composer solution. So pretty exciting. And just as a final jumping back to the PowerPoint here, so some resources for anybody out there that's needing a little bit extra help. You can always visit the Congosphere. Um, this is just a wealth of information. You can find pre-recorded webinars there. You can find documentation. Super helpful. So that address is just www.congosphere.com. You can also always email support, or you can call as well. Um, emailing, just send a quick email to support at congamerge.com. And any business analyst would be glad to assist you with any of this that we've seen here today. So pretty, pretty quick again. Um, and I'm not sure if we had any questions. Sounds like we don't have any questions. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. I really appreciate everyone's time today. And definitely look forward to helping anybody out with any of these solutions. Just give us a call or send us an email. And hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. Thank you so much.